Uh, welcome to everyone here. Sam is online and Mike is online. And the rest of us are in the room who turned up. So yay for us. <laughs> uh, we certainly don't have enough people here. We're going to do the attendance and everything. Um, we can read the mission statement and talk through if there are any updates. But this is not a formal meeting. It's for us to really record for those who aren't here and talk through our existing committees so that we can let our new members know um, expectations and ask questions about things and make sure everybody's clear moving forward. Yeah, okay. So I guess we'll start with verbal attendance. You wanna start online? Mike, are you there? Mike Warner present. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And I see Sam's here, who's our elections manager at the moment, unless something else is going to take place in the new year, right? All right, and in the room, shall we start with new members? Yeah, you can say your name and here. It'll turn green. There you go. Lee by G and here. William Coates here and present. Hello. <laughs> so excited. Matthew Rathbun here. I'm Ray Barco here. Oh, you need a microphone. Thank you, Matt. Our advisors are both here. Kenny is here, our faithful executive assistant. Do you want me to say my name again? Please go ahead. Oh, okay. Susana Villa Gomez. Welcome to your first meeting. So over the past year, it was decided to read the mission statement, I guess, to keep us focused. Is that the point of it? Yeah. Right? Who wants to read it? Go, Matt. Uh, the TSAC mission statement is to support the evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Nice. And we're not going to really vote to approve the agenda because we don't have really enough people. We don't. And this is not, we're not going to stick to this agenda really. But I would like to ask if anyone's been involved in any end of term meetings or anything on their committees, existing counselors, if you have anything you'd like to share, please do at this time. Um, say Kev, I know canceled the last meetings. Um, the last thing I heard was that uh, we were working on the safety video with a uh, AHEC and the three schools. I have to follow up with uh, Mitch Mitchell from uh, CU Denver on the progress on all of that. That's great. And I'm happy to talk with you offline too and mm -hmm. bring in the Dean of Students office so we can push it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Oh, Mike. Oh, man, have I been involved this last few months. Um, I think Dr. <laughs> Brown knows, knows just a wee bit of what I've done this past few months, but um, so just a heads up for everyone, um, I still get to work over the summer because there's a board meeting in June. Um, Armando, those photos are ready from inauguration. I would love to present the new council to uh, the board of trustees. Um, furthermore, um, I will have a report on like the whole protest situation and everything that came of it, um, all the meetings I was in and all kind of like the, the decisions that came out of it and like kind of the solutions that we came up with here at some point um within the summer um but um i'm still tasked to do a lot of work this summer for the uh for board trustees because i was reelected to it so um, i'll keep you all updated on that as we do it going forward it's lovely mike thank you for your advocacy and continuing to work all summer on things that's wonderful and one of our new members just came in and we need to get her a amanda can you share you know how to push on the front and, in, and say that you're here and your name. Hi, I'm Siobhan. Welcome, Siobhan. You're here. Thank you. Another new member. That's fantastic. Matt, you have something yeah. to share. Go right ahead. So this isn't as much with my specific committee, 
um, but two um, kind of initiatives that were started by other counselors this year that I want to really highlight for this next year is um, Leo from CCD Student Government has done a lot of great work trying to work with the Department of Human Services to get EBT vending machines on campus. Um, he's not running again, so I want to work with him and hopefully pick it up and make sure it happens. And also Naomi, our other council member who graduated in the fall, started work with the Flow project to get menstrual hygiene products on campus. I would love to work with um, like our sustainability committee, whoever else may want to take that up with me. I've been doing a lot of connections and research um, around those topics. That's fantastic. And I think that's a perfect segue for us to, unless our advisors have some things they'd like to add first, and then we can move into talking about committees. Please, Dr. Braun, Armando. Just the stuff with the plans for the project. Yeah, so um, Dr. Barone and I have been working diligently trying to plan out the summer retreat. Um, we are working to build the hybrid course that will launch, um, just so you all know, just so you have some dates in mind for those new members coming through. The hybrid course, want a hybrid, the Canvas course that will be the foundational to CSAC training will launch on July 1st. That is the goal. Um, we have July 18th, we are looking to host our first in-person retreat, um, and then August 9th, following the student, CMEI student leadership retreat, um, will be our second day. We've been working just to get some foundational knowledge down, is to make sure that people have a good basis of what TSEC is, what leadership looks like, what advocacy looks like, and different things like that. So um, please stay on the lookout for that. It is going to be robust, but we're trying to put everything in there so you can hit the ground running. Um, and not have to catch up too, too much. Yes, Will. A uh, quick question, sorry. Um, are we, I think this is more uh, directed towards Dr. Burrow since I've uh, talked to her about it, but uh, are we able to integrate the um, the other offices, uh, the, other the other centers, yes, into that training? It's off. There is an opportunity that we are incorporating some of those campus resources and we have an activity planned for that um, in the in-person part. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, um, we will probably not be able to do all of them because there's so much content, but we will definitely um, do that throughout the year. The ones that we don't fit in in the beginning, but we also felt like there were some other really foundational things that you all need to know, especially going into fall 2024. Yeah. I think that you guys are going to be set up so well with everything that's being put together for your next year. It's so exciting. And please, another new counselor just came in. Please introduce yourself and say present so we can include you in being here. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Amelia Federico, and I'm very excited to be here. So thank you so much. Yay. We're having more of an informal meeting this time because we want to talk about, you know, these committees, the standing committees and advisory committees on campus, some really important roles for you guys to fill so that you have a clear understanding of them. And that was like the main point of today and any kind of questions that, you know, we can help answer. Of course, you've got, you know, a couple of, just a two, just the two of you moving forward, three of you moving four. Oh, and Mike, of course, and yeah. Or I mean, and Alejandro moving forward, but you know, for those of us who are leaving, we get to say goodbye and good luck. So anybody else or shall we move on to talk about committees? Does that sound good? I don't really have any updates for that, no. Nope. We're doing good on time. So we have our guest coming to talk about the master plan at 1.15. And, you know, if we'd like to leave a bit of time, normally it happens at one o'clock for public comment. If anyone from the public wants to add their, you know, points, we've historically done that. Of course, you're all agreed to change your agenda in future to 
whatever you'd like it to be. I think the best thing, if we could go, yeah. I know we kind of went committee by committee, but if we can go committee by committee, just to say if there's any outstanding um, business or projects that are left, yeah. that is the biggest thing. Yeah. It is also in the in the old business, new business for us to finish off. So if we could go committee by committee for those who are here, if you can think off the top of your head for any projects, just so Kenny could put it in the minutes and we have something to refer back to later. Well, so if you want to start, I with think Mike. we accountability is third on the list and we've heard from um, Will and from Mike. So I would just say that in trying to we had um, a safety training, kind of an active harm, active shooter training among TSAC. And the reason that I'd set that up with police was so we could gauge how we might present that information if we created an event that was geared toward that because our campus is so diverse, because we have so many different age groups. Not everyone has just come from high school and familiar with those. So especially different nationalities represented, people from different cultures and backgrounds have no idea what to do in that, in that instance. And so also Will had been in his role with um, SACAB and leading these other um, talks with other CCD and CU Denver that they had an interest in being part of that too. So I think Will would be one that would take that over and talk with Dean of Students Office. And if we're involved in Welcome Week in some way, if we help create a new video that's campus specific too. So that's gonna be a lot of work this summer. And um, you know, hopefully that's something that can happen. And that's really it for accountability. We did work on a whole new structure for accountability too over the last year, and that's completed now. So if you have free time, you know, and you want to look through our constitution and you can see what's been added. Um, those are things to adhere to, but I'm sure you'll go through all that with training. Matt. Just somewhat tangential to something you said, I'm going to be, um, since I'm the only current SACAB member who will be in this next year, I'm going to be working with Will over the summer just to catch up on stuff, but Obviously, if there's any sort of initiatives or plans or stuff that need to go to that level too, please let me know and we'll advocate at many levels. Committee names probably mean nothing to you. I'm, I know that anybody else that needs to talk about finishing up work, let's do that first and then we can kind of get into that meat about these different committees. Did you have anything else to add or? Um, not at this moment, just yeah. the announcement I had for SACAB. Um, and since Matt is the only elected SACAB member as of right now, mm -hmm. um, I will work closely with him to bring you up this meeting. So. Awesome. And Mike, go, go Mike. Yes. Yes, uh, gentlemen, when you guys do that SACAB kind of meeting, um, a, um, I can give you some insights from my time as a chair there, but also um, I think I would like to like discuss with you two the possibility of reassessing um, our government's relationship with SACAB and whether it is um, whether we should continue like supporting that structure. Um, but we I, we can get to further details when uh, when I talk to you about it. Was there anything else, Mike, as well about tidying up any other? work that you had been doing over the past year lessons learned stuff like that um lessons learned um one thing i'm a, i'm working with simpkins with is really reassessing what needs student voice and what doesn't um there's like a thousand committees at the university we could join but i think really narrowing down and getting a proper list of what's important to us um will be more beneficial going into this next year so my goal is to have that list for the new council when we do those uh, assignments. That's great. OK, any anybody else? I guess that's it. So Mr. Kenny, do you think you can pull up? Yep, this um, committee sheet, especially because our two latest counselors, there's no copy for them at the moment. Now, if you can direct your attention to the screen, these are, according to our constitution, our ex four main standing committees. So 
this is within PTHAC, but these are important positions that allow us to function really, to allow us to have budget to do things, to make sure that we are adhering to requirements and expectations and, and our roles, how we communicate outwardly to the university with PR, and then sustainability, which always was, um, in, it was a main part of getting the green purchasing, purchasing agreement signed across campus, but there's more work, of course, to be done there. So the point of bring, bringing this to your attention is so that you can see what's involved in these uh, committees and you know what might pique your interest. This is not to say this is all these committees can be made up of. You know, you you are free as a new council to to add things, to change things. It's here just for you as a starting point. Who else would like to add anything else? Do you realize on the student advisory board? Just realized it. But Student Advisory Board. Yeah, I can't. No, it's one me and Gabe did. Uh, let's see. Yes, well, that's not in our Constitution and Standing Committee, okay, though. Cool. We can, but like I said, I'll bring it up you know, bit. there you go. So, what should we do? Should we read them? I mean, Hey, Ree, can I add something? <clears throat> Please do. Please do, Mike. Yeah, these committees are just the ones that like are active year round, essentially. So they're essential to the, um, how do I say this, the, the structure of TSAC and keeping it kind of going. Um, so whether, so these are like, when we have a retreat, when all the councils are there, this is the ones that are like for sure going to be voted upon. Um, but what, so these are standing committees. Advisory committees are like, which is down below the section, um, are ones that we would vote in as a council and assign representatives to. And Mike's right. That is all about when you're meeting together and you're in your, your training mode and you're getting ready for the fall term, you'll decide and vote among yourselves who would like to be part of these different committees. But we wanted to make sure that you had something to look at to know your your required you know, input level of effort for each thing as a starting point. So those are the standing committees within TSAC. And honestly, I know that from past experience, and I think you can add to this, you know, with PR committee, there's a lot of social media work and it can always be improved. I mean, I think I the, the group did a great job last year as compared to the year before, because, you know, when I was involved the year before, it was very sporadic. It wasn't consistent. And so to be seen and for the student body to see you working and what kind of things you're doing is really important. So, you know, speak for that one. yeah, go right ahead. So this year I was the PR committee chair. Um, so it's a lot of putting on events and social media is kind of the bulk of it. Um, we also do food for finals. So every semester we cater and get massage therapists or something to during finals week. And we also through the PR committee's budget um, over the last year or two, you might be able to correct me on time frame, but have bought school supplies to hand out at the beginning of the year out of the PR committee's budget to where students can just grab free school supplies when they need them. Um, and then there's other event, other more like standing events like Spring Fling and Fall Fest, which are the ones with all the like university departments and student orgs. Um, but this year I did a resolution and it kind of went a little bit to the wayside because we lost a number of council members, but I was trying to get it to where we tabled like once a month just to be out there interacting with students. I do know one of my weakest points as the PR committee chair this year was the social media because I'm just not as good at social media. So that's another good thing to think about when you're creating your PR committee team. And we can jump around. I went to PR committee because I think it's great to have you know, more than one person having to do that work unless someone loves social media and wants to take that on. But most of these committees each have their own budget based on what you want to do. So you know, there's budget allocated 
that you guys decide on and for different events. Some of these, as you can see, the budget committee just kind of keeps up with everything and also um, is the body that the student organizations talk to when they want to apply for funding from TSAC. And you can have a look at the Constitution about all the details involved in that and then the whole council votes. So anytime any of these committees are working on things, you guys can decide what you'd like to do and then it comes back to the main council for a vote. So, you know, everybody's sharing in the decisions and it's hopefully all the work isn't shouldered by one or two people. It's kind of shared around. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I just have a quick question. How many TSAC members are on those committees and then how many are like chairs that lead it? What's the difference there? So each one of these committees will have, like, based on the standing committees, will have a chair. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that even if you're a chair of another committee, you can still be on and support another committee. Yeah. Um, in fact, I would say that's encouraged. Um, but anyway, right? There's because then some of it, there is a lot of overlap, like yeah. free stuff from the training that you did with the Judiciary Committee. PR committee could jump in and do like social media posts or um, put on an event around it specifically. Um, so it's really good to tag team and know kind of what the other arms of the council is doing. Right. Thank and you. Mike can explain budget, but I know one of the things he'll say is each of the chairs from the other committees are on the budget committee. Mm -hmm. So go ahead, Mike, you take it. Well, she also had to come in. You, yep, absolutely. So budget is like most complicated committee out of those four, I would say, um, only because it is, um, it's kind of checks and balances, but um, every standing committee chair has a vote on the budget committee as well as the budget, or as well as a budget vice chair and then the chair of TSAC as a whole. Um, and if there's like two co-chairs, um, only one of them gets a vote then. So um, that's the committee um, where like, and we're not, we're not going to say we're exclusive, but it's clearly outlined who's on that committee, so. And I have to say, go right ahead, Darla. Um, I would like to know um, when can we apply? Because I'm interested in the PR committee. I'm not good with social media that much. Okay. But you but can I mean, organize events. Good. Yes, I would like to I'll learn how to do that. Time. Okay. So you guys talk to I'm actually laughing because I look at that. Y'all will yeah, work on that this summer in your training. You can because the more the better, I think. Please forgive, you know, we went to all the trouble to redo the Constitution, to redo. It's not Judiciary Committee. <laughs> it's accountability. <laughs> and because we didn't want it to sound punitive, right? We wanted it to be, you know, everybody's accountable. Everybody's working together toward positive action for students on behalf of the university. And the reason that, you know, we'll talk about the next section with the university-wide advisory committees, it's so important to be represented on those committees and that you, that's where your student voice is heard. So um, the accountability committee, it was just myself and, you know, for most of the year, one other counselor and then working with the advisors. So, you know, it was really nice to be involved in that. And, um, and then sustainability committee, you know, take that and run with it because it's all about trying to have a greener campus and different organizations really can as you you can read that they can apply for funding from TSAC to implement new programming and and supplies and things they need so very cool yes ma'am on that note the two projects i referenced earlier about the ebt vending machines and the amp flow project would probably also potentially fall under this committee um, so I would love That's to work idea. with whoever is in charge of that committee to work on those projects at both that committee level and the SACAB level to try and see what solutions we can find. Nice. Go, Will. I know we mentioned co-chairs. Um, there is a possibility of two chairs uh, running a committee, but that has to be voted on in the fall. So um, we did it last year and um, there's nothing saying that we can't do it again this year. So if there's two people who are passionate about um, being the chairs of a committee, it's it's uh, 
there is a possibility of a vote going for a co-chairing for that committee. Nice. Okay. So I, it's near, near on one o'clock, and this is the time normally where we ask for if there's public comment. I don't know that anybody's online, but we'll just say this is the time for public comment. And if anybody would like to speak now, please let, let that be known. We're glad to hear from you. And if not, then what I'd like to suggest is we can all go grab some lunch and bring it back to sit down. You know, if you need to go to the restroom, please do that. And then we can talk through these advisory committees before our guest comes. How's that sound? Good? Okay, let's do it. We're going to take um, maybe five to seven minutes just to grab food, take a break. So join us again at like 107. How's that? Hey, Sam, I got a question. Do you got anything for elections? Um, right now, we don't really have anything in the works. Uh, probably next fall, I'll start prepping for like the 24, 25 election season. But um, right now, we're pretty chill. Um, over the summer, I, I'm thinking about working on some changes to the elections code that I can then present to the, the new council. Uh, but I'll have more info on that at the beginning of the, the semester next year or the beginning of the fall semester. Gotcha. I just wanted that on record. Thank you, Sam.
Okay, you guys, I'm going to just talk on while everyone's eating just to get us rolling through these ad university wide advisory committees. Now, everybody's going to have, if you haven't seen this yet, it should, it'll be emailed to you, new and existing members, but we really care about the new members here so that you understand these important committees and what expectations are. So what we've done the past, I don't know if it's been two years, but definitely the past year is the president's cabinet. Um, the position on that cabinet normally is our chairperson. And however, it's also if any member has important information they want to share or really are interested in a certain topic in the upcoming meeting, then what has happened is a chair is happy to give up their seat so another member can go in their place. And what happens is when you read these, you'll see this is all the leadership of the university meeting with the president. It happens monthly. They talk about major priorities for the university. And then what our person's position is, is to talk about what TSAC is doing. All of these committees are really interested in the student voice. And so when you represent on these committees, you are talking about what you need to keep up with what TSAC is, is the resolutions that have been passed, the um, projects that we're working on, and um, visibility on campus, concerns on campus. So this is a really important, you know, position in which to be seen, especially if you're, you know, a chairperson. I'll roll through and please anybody interrupt me if you want to add something, but just to give an overview quickly. <laughs> we got to get done by. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that on these committees, talk to whoever's in there. They want to talk to you. Don't feel intimidated, spooked, scared. They want you to talk to them. That was it. Academic policy committee. I was. I was not on that committee. So this committee meets weekly. It's an early morning meeting. And as you can see, this is all about the academics and um, scheduling for students, um, everything that's decided in regard to academics. So you can see Denny had written, you'll be expected to bring suggestions back to TSAC with ideas that they're promoting things they're thinking about. They want the student voice, they want student feedback. So that's an important position. The University Policy Advisory Committee meets monthly. I was on that the year before and Denny was on it this past year. These are the major policies that are being considered by the university to instigate for change in any way. So uh, it's it's a long process because you have department heads and um, representatives from each major present here, as well as um, staff departments, and it affects everything to do with policy for the university. So you'll share this back to TSAC, this information. The Planning and Budget Advisory Committee we did not have a representative this past year, I understand. Is that right, Dr. Brown? You don't have to, okay. The Planning and Budget Advisory Committee, no. And they, you know, they needed to have somebody. So now we know going forward, this is an important position that we need to front for and all about budget issues for the university. Um, again, department heads, senior leaders of the university and you're going to represent the students and make suggestions. You are, as Matt said, you're really listened to on these committees. They really respect your opinion and you're asked, you know, as a voting member to offer feedback and advice. And then you take that not only to TSAC, you know, you encourage TSAC for some of these things to take it further into your different majors, you know, into the, into the departments. Um, then student travel committee, um, I was on this over the past couple of years. They don't formally meet now. So this used to be a big process where students could apply for funding for professional development, to go to conferences, things like that. This still exists. 
but they've simplified the process, which is nicer if you're going to serve on this committee. Um, they All you do is review and score proposals on your own time and return it to um, the department. But it's nice to be involved in that because you can see what's going on around campus, what's available, and also you are known to the people who are the decision makers if you want to apply for this sometime. All right, and Kenny, would you like to talk about your role as executive assistant? Oh. Sure, I will make this quick because we have a presenter coming in. Uh, yeah, so basically my role is, um, think of it as somebody who helps out TSAC with the more administrative side of things. Uh, I take the minutes, I do the recordings for the meeting, post them on YouTube. Um, I'm usually the main person being in the office. So whoever is your new TSAC executive assistant um, for next year, be kind to them. <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, they're there. Um, help keep, keep the files clean, help be a point of contact between students as well and as well as with like higher ups. So, you know, definitely if you have questions or if there's something that they can assist you on, feel free to reach out to them. Please add Dr. Brown. If I can just add to a couple things that uh, Kenny said, Kenny has also been really great about um, helping not only keep things organized administratively, but helping to communicate with um, leadership or senior leadership around your resolutions, referendums, all of those things, making sure that that communication is going out from TSAC in a clean, organized way. Um, and so I just want to say thank you to Kenny because he has been an amazing asset to us this past year and we really, really appreciated him. I think he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Yay, Kenny. <laughs> We're going to miss Kenny. <laughs> and he's going on to Johns Hopkins. He's going to John Hopkins Medical School. Yeah. <laughs> We're just really amazing. proud of him. Wow. Um, but in addition to that, um, some of the other just quick things that Kenny has also helped with is just also making not only making sure the office is covered, but office hours and those types of things. That's something that we're really going to emphasize this next year um, and making sure that the office is staffed with more than just Kenny, um, <laughs> because that's important for you all to have a presence in the student government office. So we will talk more about that later, but really appreciate Kenny and wishing him the very best. For sure. So that was just a very general overview of some of these outward facing committees that are so important to TSAC. And um, I'm sure that you will be really enthusiastic to be part of that. So I wish you so much luck. And now we're going to roll into our guest. Alex Tineski is here and he is a campus planner for the university to talk about the master plan. So can we give all of our attention and Alex, you let us know how you'd like to present this. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you all can hear me OK. Yes, we can. Perfect. All right, uh, so thanks for the introduction. Thanks for the opportunity <clears throat> to be here. My name is Alex Stineski. I'm the campus planner for MSU Denver. I've been at the university for coming up on five years now. Um, and so MSU has had two representatives on the steering committee for AHEX campus master plan process. Um, so it's been myself and James Mejia, our chief strategy officer, who've been looped in on this plan uh, from the very start. Um, I'm going to try to give this presentation relatively quickly so we leave uh, some time at the end for your questions. I'd, I'd love to hear those if you have them. Um, and, I, and I have a hard stop at 145. So um, I'm hoping we can get through all this content uh, in that time. So uh, unless there's any questions, I'll go ahead and start. I, I can't see you all in the video, so let me know if you do have questions. You go right ahead. You've got all the time you need. <laughs> Appreciate it. So uh, the vision overall for this project is to create a thriving and active campus to support student success and institutional identities in order to enrich our collective experiences, strengthen campus cohesion, and achieve financial sustainability. Um, so that's really been the center uh, upon which we've um, worked through all of these decisions around the plan 
um, and the engagement opportunities that we've had throughout. I hope uh, for some of you that that some of this material will look familiar. We've had a number of open houses and other engagement opportunities for students, faculty and staff over the past year or so. Um, and so I'm hopeful that some of you have been able to participate in those. Uh, the guiding principles for this plan, number one, is integrate the Auraria campus as a complete community. Um, so really making sure that we're highlighting those opportunities to live, work, play and learn on the campus and, and integrating them and stitching them together, not only within the campus, but without uh, outside the boundaries. Um, we're also looking to create a new sustainable financial model for the campus. Um, as many of you probably know, historically, AHEX revenue has been largely generated through parking fees. Um, COVID obviously exposed the, the significant risk that comes behind relying on parking for a lot of your money. Um, and so we really took this plan as an opportunity to try to generate new ideas for how to um, create a sustainable, a sustainable mode for financial development on the campus. Uh, we also look to enhance and expand connections to downtown Denver. There's a number of different large developments that are happening right now surrounding our campus. Uh, the Ball Arena development, River Mile, um, both to our north and west, and then Burnham Yards to our south. Um, so how do we really make sure that the campus isn't kind of left behind uh, where there are all these developments happening around us? We also really took it upon ourselves to design a, a, and define a cohesive campus with distinctive character so that the individual institutions are not lost. Um, so making sure that neighborhood concept that's been uh, kind of pervasive throughout the campus in the last 20 years is still elevated and celebrated, but we're also looking at opportunities to collaborate uh, more, more clearly and more in a more uh, cohesive way. Uh, we also really wanted to make sure that diversity, equity, inclusion was was reflected in this plan. We actually recently brought on a consultant um, to help us, number one, engage with the community around DEI issues and how they can be uh, more robustly and um, cohesively reflected in our planning. Um, and then he's also helping us to work through some of the language that will appear in the final report. And then last but not least, honoring and celebrating the history of the campus, uh, aligning with the AHEC strategic plan. Uh, this is really about acknowledging, um, you know, how the campus came to be, displaced Aurarians, um, indigenous groups that were also displaced from the land that the campus currently sits on, and, and making sure that we raise up the voices of, of those folks, um, however we can throughout our planning processes. Any questions on on that before we move forward? Nope, sounds Great. good. All right, so we have a number of big ideas um, that kind of relate to those principles uh, and get into more physical translation of the principles that we we're talking about. So the first is a learning loop. Um, this is essentially a, a new ring road that goes around the interior of campus. It's intended to be um, Two lanes of traffic, very slow, probably 20 miles per hour with on street parking in, in certain spots. Um, and it's kind of acknowledging that inside of that ring road is really the core academic identity of our campus. Um, and then on the outside of that ring road, and as you get more towards the edges of campus, especially on the corners where we interact more with the city, we're looking at more opportunities for development, potentially future places for housing, retail and dining, uh, those sorts of things where, where we're bleeding a little bit more into downtown Denver. Uh, we're also considering a uh, campus shuttle that would sort of have the, the core of its route would be this new ring road to help with access um, and just making sure that the interior of that is a really fantastic pedestrian experience. So going along with that, we're focusing quite a bit on ground floor activation. Um, so, as I said, making sure that there are uh, many more opportunities for uh, retail, dining, event space, maker spaces, um, and making sure that those are engaging really well um, with the pedestrian experience um, and the landscape experience that we're also looking to enhance as part of this plan. 
So urban integration kind of goes along with that as well. Um, you'll notice that we're really highlighting these gateway moments around the edges of campus. They're sort of um, shown with these bullseyes that you'll see kind of around um, on the street crossings. So for instance, at Spear and Lawrence and Spear and Larimer, really making sure that once you cross Spear, you, you realize you're on a campus. It's a different kind of experience from downtown but it's uh, cohesive and it flows well. Um, and so these gateway moments are something that we're, that we're really trying to improve and focus on as part of this plan. Um, and then finally, just thinking about how do we uh, circulate people, whether it's in a vehicle, bike, pedestrian, uh, or some kind of mix there, making sure that those experiences are um, smooth, cohesive, and that we're not creating conflicts between bikes and cars and pedestrians and cars. So this graphic does a really great job of highlighting some of our, our major campus moments. We wanna make sure that the they're kind of interstitched in a way that, that makes that experience really unique and, and different from downtown, um, but also uh, kind of allows you to like I said, flow more freely between the experience of our campus edge and our interior. Um, so highlighting Tivoli, the Emanuel Gallery, St. Cajetans, all along these uh, landscape moments that we currently have, but could really use some love to, to spruce them up and, and make those experiences more unique and interesting for, for anyone who walks through our campus. Next big idea is vertically evolving campus. So what this graphic really shows is just the parcelization of campus, how we're thinking about different pieces of land and how they might be developed. Um, one of the big ideas, uh, I think in, in kind of layman's terms that's come out of this is we need to build up. Uh, our land is a fantastic asset on this campus. And so we need to uh, leverage it in a way that is highly beneficial to our students, faculty and staff. Um, and also just allows us to get the most sort of bang for our buck when we do new projects, right? So um, really looking to build up um, whenever we do a new project uh, to make sure that we're spending our dollars as wisely as possible. Um, and economies of scale really come into play here when you start to look at uh, taller and taller buildings. At the same time, we're also trying to make sure that the core of campus maintains some of its current character. Um, so you don't feel like, you know, you're walking through Manhattan or something with a bunch of skyscrapers. We really want to maintain the more intimate uh, academic experience that we have on the core of campus and then think more vertically as we get to the edges. Uh, and this just shows some of those building typologies. So you'll notice that we have a number of different um, sort of framework or uh, building block ideas for how we would develop some of these sites. On the left side, uh, we're looking at lower density academic. So, you know, four and five story buildings, kind of similar to what we have on campus today, perhaps a little bit more dense. Um, and then as we get more on those edges, we're thinking more about mixed use. We're thinking about housing, retail on the ground floor um, and those pieces. And that's where we get into that uh, larger, more vertical type development. Another big idea is a living and active campus. So how do we enhance the public realm experiences on campus? Um, I think this is a huge opportunity. I think it's something that we can act on a little bit more quickly uh, as opposed to building a bunch of new buildings, right? Um, and so this is something we spent a lot of time and effort on. Uh, and we heard from the community loud and clear, I think that we need uh, more landscape and um, open space improvements on campus. Uh, so we're thinking about this as two uh, really key corridors that cut through the middle of campus. One is Larimer, which basically goes kind of north south there. Um, thinking of that as a more formalized experience, um, really flowing nicely into Larimer Street uh, across Spear. Um, but creating that public realm that's perhaps a little bit more formal, but still tons of opportunity for more uh, green space, more trees, better uh, canopy coverage. And then the Lawrence Corridor is a little bit less formal. It connects the, the rack and our athletics facilities at the southwest corner of campus up through the core with Tivoli 
um, and the other uh, kind of student focused moments. And so uh, the thought there is that it would be more informal, focused on uh, like with a mental health lens, um, just really bringing as much green as possible into that corridor um, and making it just interesting and, and um, rejuvenating for folks to walk through. So this just shows kind of an idea through a rendering of, of what we might look to do as far as improving some of our streetscapes and landscapes uh, to, as I said, create a, a better and, and more interesting public realm opportunity throughout campus. The, the next big idea, as I mentioned earlier as well, is honoring our history. Um, so connecting some of those really critical and key historical moments that we have on campus. I think it starts with Tivoli, but um, stitches in with St. Cajetan's, with Golda Meir, with the Emanuel Gallery, uh, St. Elizabeth's Church, and then, of course, Ninth Street Park. Um, so making sure that those are really well connected um, and highlighted on campus. And as you can see, the yellow dotted line represents the 5280 Trail, which is a City of Denver initiative to create a walking path throughout the city. It cuts right through our campus and it touches on many of those kind of key historical moments that I mentioned throughout our campus. So how do we um, create that experience that honors the history and uh, lets folks know um, where they are on campus and what the importance is? Uh, a huge idea that's come out of that that's already gaining a lot of momentum is a peace garden. Uh, this is a rendering of what that peace garden might look like. Uh, we have a faculty member from CU Denver who's a landscape architect that is working on designing this uh, uh, concept for the Peace Garden. It would occupy one of the open spaces on 9th Street um, and just acknowledging, you know, the, the history of the land that Auraria campus occupies um, and giving a place um, for some kind of silent reflection or uh, solemnity around um, how 9th Street Park came to be. I think this is the last big idea that I'll touch on, and, and this was really um, less of a physical manifestation and more of a process. So how uh, do we actually get projects done on our campus? It's been, I would say, a huge challenge for us as MSU Denver and the other institutions because there's been a lack of clarity around when, you know, when we as MSU Denver have an idea for a building, how do we actually execute it and, and get it done? Um, and make sure that we're serving our students, faculty and staff in the best way we can. So the way to, that we've tried to resolve that problem is to institute uh, a new integrated planning group. This would have representation from all four institutions, AHEC and the three um, colleges and universities. Uh, this way we're discussing in the kind of ideation phase of any project with our campus partners, um, you know, MSU would come and say, here's what we're thinking we want to do on this site. We talk about how whether or not there are opportunities to collaborate, um, because especially in this new um, kind of era of funding and, and getting projects done, we're stronger when we work together for sure. And, and projects are easier to get done uh, when we all are, are pulling towards a common goal. Um, that decision point then goes to the Auraria Executive Committee for review, um, eventually the board, uh, and then back to the institution who's owning the project for program plan development. Um, so I think the key takeaway here is just creating a formalized way in which we will collaborate with other institutions um, and understand more clearly what you know each of them is thinking as it relates to project development. So this uh, is a 3D rendering uh, of the final proposed plan. This is probably a 40 to 50 year vision for the campus. Um, and so this is going to be a step by step process. Even 10 years from now, a lot of things will change. Uh, but the intent here is just to provide a framework through which we might think on a project by pro project basis, you know, what types of uses might make sense on different sites, uh, where might, might we think about doing housing mixed use bringing in more retail, bringing in uh, that ground floor activation experience, as I mentioned earlier, um, and really enhancing those campus gateway moments. 
Um, but I, I think the key takeaway here again is is that um, this is a very much a long term vision for the campus and we we're going to have a lot of work and a lot of time ahead of us in order to to make it happen. Next is the the landscape framework. I think the the public realm slide that we talked through earlier does a good job of addressing this, uh, so I won't talk too much about that. Connectivity and mobility again, um, that new ring road is going to be huge in terms of just creating that uh, interior campus academic experience, but also the the new shuttle that is being proposed as part of this, I think will will really enhance the mobility opportunities for students on campus as you're you're getting from you know one class to another. And then this is just a 2D rendering of that development framework that I showed earlier. Uh, so this is where we landed on the final plan. Again, pushing out a lot of that housing and, and extreme vertical development to the edges of campus where we might think of more mixed uses and then keeping the, the campus character in that academic core maintained, but just improving and, and uh, adding in more density horizontally um, for academic uses. So I'll stop there. Um, absolutely happy to answer any questions you all might have. I know it's a lot of information to digest. Um, happy to share out the presentation afterwards as well. Thank you, Alex. I think Mike, did you? Yes, go right ahead, Mike. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, Alex, I appreciate the work you do, um, especially the work you and James are here do, as always. Um, working with AHEC um, is not the easiest thing in the world, so I appreciate it, but I do think <laughs> Carl has the best intentions in mind. Um, one thing I would like to um, just impart on you is, and in these rooms, in these meetings, I like when you said um, how AHEC can kind of diversify its funding sources, because right now the vast majority of AHEC's money comes from students, whether that's student parking, student bookings. Right now, not a lot of it, like, and I've seen the numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's majority of that. I would like to, as a future, seeing this campus be remodeled in the next 10 years, see kind of a future where like, you know, we aren't relying on students as much to pay our bills. Cause like, whether yeah. as like someone who's leading a student org on this campus, I al always have to reconsider whether it's financially like worth it for us to host an event here or somewhere else because we have to book it, pay for it. I mean, students pay too much to book rooms as it is. And it's I mean, it's really stifling engagement on this campus. That's that's great feedback. I really appreciate that. Um, and, and what I would say is that I, I feel like I've heard your perspective kind of echoed in a lot of the um, rhetoric that AHEC is using around this recently. So to, to me, that's a good thing. Um, what they've talked about a lot as it relates to this plan is leveraging the, the land that we have on campus as an asset so that we can generate funds to reinvest. Um, obviously, I'm sure you all know or can see that a lot of those shared buildings in the core of campus that were built in the 60s and 70s have considerable deferred maintenance issues, right? And so I think AHEC has been thinking about how do we generate more funds to address a lot of those deferred maintenance issues and um, you know, build new buildings at the same time. And so I, I think they're thinking a lot more creatively about that than they have in the past. Love to hear it, love to see it. I'm excited for uh, the plans going forward. So I appreciate the work you do. Thank you. This is Amelia. <clears throat> I'm one of the new council members. Thank you so much, Alex, for your presentation. Um, and one question that I had is in the developmental de developmental framework that you shared in terms of each project, you know, you said this is a long term plan, 40 to 50 years, maybe even more. What will be prioritized in that developmental plan in terms of maybe like closer than 50 years from now? Yeah, no, that's an awesome question. Thank you. And I also just want to name uh, normally I would be on camera, but my camera decided to break yesterday on my laptop. So I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not on camera to answer these questions for you guys. Um, the what I would say is that the priorities are largely set by each individual institution, right? So we, we don't 
have a, a ton of visibility on what CU Denver and CCD are thinking, although we have a little bit from from our perspective, MSU Denver. Um, I think student housing is a huge priority. We're we're underway uh, on hiring an advisor to help us think through public private partnership opportunities to to build student housing. Um, so I think that's a huge priority for us right now. The Health Institute Tower, we just found out um, a few weeks ago that we got funding from the state in order to build that. It's a new facility that will be just south of West Classroom on a, in between Boulder Creek and West Classroom, six floors that are all primarily dedicated to new health education spaces. Um, another priority for us is, is renovating the PE Center pool. Um, obviously, uh, having a defunct pool on campus is, is an eyesore and I know our president is particularly fired up about that. So um, we're working to address that and create a new space out of that pool area. Um, and so those, I would say those are kind of our big three priorities right now. Um, and once we've executed on those, we'll think a little more about the future, but we have a lot in, in the immediate kind of three to five year window right now that we're working on. Thank you. Alex, this is, I didn't introduce myself before. This is Ree, um, one of the outgoing members. And um, thank you, Amelia. That was, that was a wonderful question. I have experience working in placemaking and I appreciate all the activation that's intentionally going to be at the bottom and in the, in the common spaces on campus. Mm -hmm. I wondered if one of the things that we found when I did this work was and when you're planning these spaces, especially for communal use, and it could be, you know, a, a chance to be incentivized by having adding sound and lighting ability and partial covering, even if it's temporary covering in some of these wider outdoor spaces, so it can become an event space. They can become event spaces too. Yeah, I, I love that recommendation. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, AHEC is working right now on a tree survey of campus. Um, so part of that is looking at the canopy coverage that we have, um, which I think, uh, you know, if you compare us to a lot of other uh, urban campuses, we're probably not doing that great as far as mm -hmm. tree canopy. So, you know, I would, I think our goal as MSU is whenever we do a project is to try to improve uh, tree canopy wherever we can. Um, but to your point, that's that's not the only way to address that either. So we're we're always open to creative ways of of creating, you know, better and more um, engaging public realm spaces. Wonderful. And I wanted to ask as well. I'm sure if you have someone consultants and with all the thought that's gone into this, but step TED practices that'll be part of this too, especially with a downtown center like we have the crime prevention through the environmental design. That's going to play a part. I'm sure, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. Well, we have, according to your schedule, about five minutes left. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to ask, Alex? Or would you like to tell us something, Alex? I'm open for questions. If if you all have any, happy to answer anything else. <laughs> hey, Alex, how you doing? This is William Coates. Uh, um, member here at TSAC and be here next year. But uh, I wanted to ask, you did say you guys are planning on building up, but are you at any point planning on expanding? In terms of like acquiring new land? Yes. That, that wasn't heavily considered in this plan. Um, I think it, this is a little bit above my head, but whenever we have, um, you know, an opportunity to acquire something that makes sense and meets our mission and, and gives us an opportunity to improve the student experience. And we always uh, consider those. Um, a few years ago, we had an opportunity like that to potentially acquire some housing that another university was uh, basically letting go, but ended up deciding not to do that. So there's always a lot of calculus that goes into those decisions um, and kind of above my pay grade, to be frank, but um, I think we're we're always considering those opportunities as they arise. All righty, thank you. I, I think do have one more question. Oh, go ahead, Amelia, please. I was wondering in because we're tri-institutional and then we also have 
AHEC. So there's a lot of um, people coming to the table. Does everybody have to agree when any new development is going to be proposed, when it's going to be started into action, or is this more kind of on an individual university level? Yeah, that that is a fantastic question. Um, my understanding with the new IPG that I was talking about, um, it's it's less of an approval arm and more of a, hey, this is what we're thinking about. How can we work together and collaborate um, and and kind of work together better, right? And and so um, you know, pretty much all of our projects do have to go before ABOD, uh, the board, in order to get some form of approval. Um, however, the the IPG and kind of getting approval from the other institutions through that is that's not necessarily the intent. The intent is really to create a stronger um, communication avenue um, and generate more opportunities to work together. Thank you, Mike. Go ahead. Hello, Alex. Um, I'm not sure if you mentioned this or I, I wasn't or, or I missed it. Um, these for the new people in the room. Do you mind giving a brief kind of synopsis of where we're at on the student housing project coming here in a few years? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we did a, a massing study with an architecture firm to explore number one, what sites might we look at uh, if we're, you know, for our first kind of foray into housing? Um, what would the building look like? beyond student housing, uh, what kind of program opportunities might there be in that building um, and how many beds would we would be be able to fit? Um, so we've completed that study uh, and we have some great ideas that come out of that, but very much conceptual at this point. Um, so the next step, um, I think I briefly mentioned this, is we have, have an RFQ out right now for an advisor to come on board, help us to do a market study. The last um, student housing market study that we did was completed in 2019, so before COVID. Uh, it's it's definitely out of date and needs um, some updating, so we'll be working on that. Um, and they'll also help us to think through, you know, do we have the right site selected or should we consider other ones? Um, you know, all kinds of considerations. How should we finance the project? What should go in it? Um, and so I, I think we're we're several years out from from kind of working to design and construction on the project, but there's a lot of momentum um, and we're really excited for that advisor to come on board. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. All right, uh, unfortunately, I do have to jump off, but I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, you all had great questions, so I, I really appreciate that too. I'm going to drop my email in the chat. Um, if any of you happen to have more questions or, you know, are interested in opportunities to engage in this kind of work more, um, I always have an open door and I'm happy to chat with any of you. Um, so please feel free to reach out. On behalf of us all, we thank you so much for your time and explaining this to us. It's very exciting. Absolutely. Thank happy to do time. it. Thanks for having me. I'll take care. All right, does anybody else have anything else they are concerned about or would like to share as we, I guess, bring this meeting to an end? There's one thing. Um, I see what, uh, there's no mention of the student implementation, uh, the student success launch implementation uh, mm -hmm. team or committee. Um, I'm not sure if Will Simpkins is, I imagine they're going to bring that back next year and ask for a TSAC counselor, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Brown. Yes, that is a really good point, William. Um, they they will be asking for representation from this group, so we should definitely add it to one of the university-wide committees, the Student Success Launch. Um, yeah, so I I know that that group is currently – I don't know if they're meeting over the summer. I know that they are doing some work, but we will definitely make sure to add that to get representation for the fall. The other thing I want to add is that I am working with Ed Brown, um, President Davidson's chief of staff and um, others to make arrangements 
four regular meetings with President Davidson um, for her to join TSAC at least, I'm hoping for, twice a semester. Um, and then uh, some additional meetings that she would have probably with the chair or co-chairs, um, at least on a monthly basis, is what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm asking for, and we're trying to make it all work. We also typically have a dinner at the beginning of the year um, with senior leaders. Um, so that would be Dr. Davidson. Um, the provost is also usually invited, um, and Dr. Simpkins, the VP for Student Affairs, um, Taylor Tackett, AVP and Dean of Students, um, myself, Armando. Um, and then we usually go to dinner um, and just have you all talk about your priorities, your goals, the things that you all have set for yourself. That usually happens in about September-ish, like early September. So those are things that I'm already working to get on the calendar for next year. I just wanted to also say, I know it sounds like a lot, but this is just so great to add. I mean, there's seven of you, including Mike online here for next year. It's so much to add, of course, to your resume, but also to your toolkit, you know, of what you'll take through life with what you learn here. I mean, I'm an example of no matter what age, right? So please consider at least being on a couple of these outward university advisory committees it's going to be so great to know what's going on, to be able to communicate that well, and to add your voice on behalf of TSAC and students to that. So consider that. It sounds like a lot, but it's going to be really rewarding, as many of us who've been here this past year know. But thank you. Hello again. Um, I was wondering um, how cost efficient would um, all of this be for the net for um, 2025 um, for the students? Because that because everything that we're that I've heard so far is like that sounds like a lot of money and and I remember just last year um, they had changed the tuition, raised the bill. So like, yeah, I would like to. Look, um, understand, make me understand how they're going to um, tie that into our tuition. I don't have a probably the answer you're looking for, but that's what joining these committees will help you get into. Because you, these different committees will tell you what's going on, what their initiatives are, how they're spending our money, why they're spending it. And you could share your voice in those spaces as well of given your opinion on how it should be spent. For instance, I referenced one that wasn't up here that me and Gabe did this year, which is the Student Advisory Board. We actually run the meetings and organize students to vote on how our student fee, the generic student fee, um, is spent across like seven different departments. So we actually got to vote on how that money was spent across like MedMedia, us, um, the Early Learning Center and much more. Um, to add on to, oh, um, well, yeah. oh, okay. Um, I know Mike has been working for a vote, what, um, for ABOD, I believe, or SACAM. I can't remember which one, Mike, maybe you can uh, chime in there, but get a more student voice on not just committees that are ran by the school but also like a voice on boards or slash committees that are ran by a heck as well so well do you mind repeating what you just said <clears throat> that one vote that we've been trying to acquire on i believe it's others a bot or say cab i say cab okay Yes, I can speak on that. Okay. Um, what I would so, Caro does this really, really weird thing with higher education, meaning that their student representatives aren't allotted votes on their university boards, and AHEC has taken that statute and applied it to them as well. So the rare board of directors is made up of all three institutions, and then a student representative, and then a faculty representative of one of the three institutions as well. Um, but that student representative doesn't get a vote, and quite frankly, like, 
is isn't allowed into po our uh, executive session and usually just sits there outside of executive session because we can get to a whole conversation about how a bod does not really work for students in my opinion um at least board of trustees is slightly better but that's more of a project that i'd take up with like the state so if anyone wants to go to the state legislature and lobby that maybe with me let me know but yeah that's i think that's what you're referring to right well Yes, that is. Um, I know Matt has some more information on that as well. Yeah, so the reason we don't have voting rights with the Auraria board is actually how AHEC was created legally, because um, it's written into the Colorado statute that created AHEC that both the SACAB and FACAB, which is the faculty side, don't get voting rights, they're only advisory committees. So as Mike was saying, we would need to go to the state to change a law to get voting rights. We do have a former TSAC member working with one of our state elected officials. So, you know, that's not Hopefully a will be far reach. <laughs> Hopefully it will be too this next year. Hopefully. All right. Well, yes, Amelia, please. When do um, votes or um, applications go out for each of these committees and then committees within TSAC? I, I could do it. <laughs> so we typically start talking about these things during the summer, but usually it's the beginning of fall where it's more of like a call out to um, determine what the representatives who wants to either sit on the committees or chair the committees and you all start to decide that in early fall um, and then make those decisions. Some of the committees, some of them are standing, some of them, it depends on the time of year, but most of them are standing. And there are some on here that I just realized are missing, like SAB is a big one actually. Um, that TSEC is actually responsible for. That is a university-wide committee. Um, and I'm trying to think if there are others, but I feel like we might be missing a few more. Um, and so one of the proposals, I think, is that um, each council member will sit on at least one university-wide committee and then at least one internal standing committee. I think that is what the previous council was recommending. Um, but yeah, they usually happen. We start talking about it in summer, you learn about what they are, and then making some decisions in early fall. Uh huh. Um, with that on the voting, it's all internal, so it'll be in our meetings. Figured that was part of the question. Yeah, in our formal meetings. Yeah, so it's not like going out to the campus, it's all internal. I was gonna say, ready to go. All right. I motion to adjourn the meeting. I mean, we don't have enough. <laughs> so. No problem. Yeah, that's so all we can close out today. Um, just want to say thank you. If we can give a good round of applause and clap out for Ree and Kenny who are leaving. It's this thank you, right. thank you all so much for your hard back. work. Um, the nice. new counselors, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for participating today. You will get more information coming soon, but please do take a restful break. If you have internships, do good work, represent MSU well. Um, you have a lot to come in the academic year. It's exciting, it's fun, it will be fun. We'll keep it that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, just come come with a fresh slate, fresh spine, and just be ready to show up for the students and show up for your peers. Yeah. So with that, go ahead, Dr. Ron. Yeah, I just want to add on to that and say that I really want to want to welcome the new members and we're really excited to work with you all. I think that y'all are going to seriously, like, I'm really, really excited to work with you all. You're going to get to know Armando and I really well right now. We feel a little weird and like awkward, right? Like strangers, but by the end of the year, you will know us really well. Um, and so I just want you all to know that we're here for you. We're here to support you. Um, we care deeply about you all and what you're trying to do, and we're here to help you facilitate your goals and 
and your passions and figure things out even politically. Um, I also want to acknowledge the outgoing council um, members who are either online or who are here. I think Sam is going to be sticking around, um, which we're really excited about, but they've, they've really been through a tough year and they made it through and they stuck through it. They were consistent. They were persistent. They were determined. And I've seen a lot of growth in each and every one of you. Um, and I really wish Denny and some of the others were here too, to acknowledge their growth and their leadership. But I don't know where we would have been if we didn't have some amazing student leaders on this council. So I just really want to acknowledge all of you, the current council as well. And so let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> And then, um, and I, I think lastly, I just want to acknowledge because we haven't named this and I think I need to name it. You know, this past couple months has been stressful for all of us <laughs> and all of the things that you all are navigating in terms of advocating for student needs, working with the administration, working between the students and senior leadership or the administration. It's a tough job. I do it too. And it is really, really challenging um, at times. And so I just really want to acknowledge how you all came together at the end of the year with everything that was going on with the encampment, the political pressures, all of the things that were going on and the ways that you all showed up in that meeting that we had with President Davidson, both current and new council members, was so strong and so forceful and so incredible. I got a lot of emails after um, from folks who were just like, wow, you know, they really, they were awesome and really acknowledged and lifted you all up in a really good way that I was really proud of. Um, and I want you all to know that that is um, not only your role and your responsibility, bless you, um, not only your role and your responsibility, but I want you all to know that you are respected, valued, and your um, opinions and your perspective is so, so important more than ever. I mean, it always has been, but I really want you to know that people are listening to you all and looking to you for leadership and guidance right now from all parts of the institution, students as well as leaders on this campus. And that is not something that um, I, I would say don't take that lightly, but also know that you're here, you're not alone in it, right? And that we're going to be here with you to help you get through some of those really challenging times and lean on one another too, because it is hard. And going into this election season, I'm bracing myself. <laughs> And we're all going to need to brace ourselves and really support one another and create a cohesive team to be able to do the things that we need to do um, to support our community, our campus, and our students this year. And we're also going to need to take breaks sometimes, you know, or know when we need to take a break or know when we need to take care of our mental health, right? Because you all are students first. And I want you to know that we know that. We acknowledge that and that your priorities as students also need to come first um, because this job can be really, it's not a job. This service, <laughs> you'll hear me catch everybody on that. We can't call this a job. The service um, and the leadership that you're doing in this role can be very taxing. Um, but in order to sustain the work, it's really important that you all are able to balance your, all of your roles and your responsibilities with your family, with your life, with school, with your job, and this. And so just know that that's going to be really important for you to be able to continue in your roles. And I really want to encourage us all to acknowledge that, that we're all on this journey together, but we're all going to need to support one another in that too, including Armando and I. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you all for everything you've done, and we're really, really proud of you. Thank you.